Well, thank you very much. Well, what a, what a pleasure to be here. Nobody had walked across the continent of Antarctica, and Shackleton was going to be the first. Remember, this was an age of time where, where man was pushing the limits in exploration possibilities. It was, it was called the age of the heroics, where near suicidal attempts to make a name for yourself in the name of science and discovery were being attempted. These ex various expeditions were being spun out of Canada, the United States, Britain, and other countries. And many of them ended in tragedy. I put an ad in the London Times, and uh, probably around 1912 or so when he was assembling the uh, expedition. And, uh, and the ad read, men wanted for hazardous journey, small wages, good or cold, long months of complete darkness, constant danger, safe return, doubtful. <laughs> Honor and recognition in case of success. Doesn't that sound like a nursing ad of modern day? <laughs> yeah, I think so. We're heading off now on an incredible trip. A trip uh, through the roughest ocean in the world. And here's our ship. It's a 300-foot-long, ice-reinforced ship. A Russian vessel that was built in just off the east coast of Ellesmere Island. I flew up there this uh, two weeks ago, actually. How long a flight? Oh, it's a long flight. We had to fly to Ottawa, and then from Ottawa north to Iqaluit, and then to Resolute Bay, and then a charter flight further north. So it's 14 hours of flying Ooh, in total. Wow. Now, if you go, could go through Yellowknife, it would be a lot shorter. But still, you have to realize Canada's a big place. Yeah. And you really get a feel for how big it is when, you, when it takes you 14 hours to move from one side of Canada to the other. Wow. Yeah. All right, take us there. Yeah, let's go. This is, we went with a company called Whitney and & Smith, and look at the landscape that we went to. This is on Ellesmere Island. This is one of the most beautiful places in the world. I was 21 years old when I went here the first time, and I worked at a place called Eureka, just on the other side of the island. And this, this is the mountainous area that I used to just dream of getting to. And so 15 years I went for the first trip here, and then two weeks ago went back with my wife. And look at this paradise. You're paddling around these cathedrals of icebergs floating in this dead still water, this beautiful water, and look at the wildlife. Here, we're just paddling past, yes, a couple of walrus. No! The wal this is the eastern uh, uh, species of walrus, the subspecies, and they're not as common as the western group, so to find them is exciting. And in this particular part of the Arctic, they're common. And we were paddling past them uh, virtually every day. Sometimes they were pulled up on the ice, just like this, and to see them up on the ice is very exciting. Now, walrus are big, and here's one that actually aggressively came towards us, and so we had our defense mechanism is to, to pull up together in, in, in a big pontoon, where, so we all grab our, each other's kayaks to basically get a good stable platform, and then let the walrus figure out who we are, and eventually they would usually just uh, look at us like this. We had no negative encounters with walrus at all. It was all very, very positive. Here's a family group of walrus, and another family group that had hauled up on a bit of ice. 
and you can see the, the couple in the middle there, that was actually a mother and a baby. Mm. And then we came across this. These are ivory gulls, and they're a very highly specialized Arctic gull. Pure snow white with jet black legs and uh, jet black eyes, and they were there because of the narwhale. And the narwhale, we pulled out at this one lunch spot in this beautiful fjord that was studded with these icebergs, narwhales started to appear in large numbers. And we were accompanied by narwhale on pretty well the whole trip. Look at how close they are to our kayaks. Mm -hmm. They're right under the water, right beside us. We're standing there on that rock having lunch, and we had about 20 or so narwhale. And here's, there's a double tusker on the right there, and he just submerged. And you can see them breathing out of their air holes just wow. under the water. And they're pushing the fish. And look at, wow. there's my classic video of a narwhale. You can see the whole tusk uh, right, right there. Me. Right now are more narwhales. They've been coming and going all night long. And they're feeding on huge shoals of what's known as Arctic cod. And one of these cod actually washed up last night. This is it. This is the species of fish that is out there in such numbers that they look like dark clouds moving along through the clear water. A highly specialized Arctic fish. Isn't that amazing? That, wow. and, and, and so we just happened to be there at the right time when all of these were coming together. Now this is, this is one of the most exciting moments. The sound of these narwhale sounded like air pistons. One after the other. Your heart rate starts to rise. Look at how close they are to us. These are some friends of mine from Calgary here, and look at the, the narwhal were right beside the kayak. And then uh, the same group came right over to where Dee and I were. Watch this. They're coming in closer and closer, and just when they're about to virtually make, make contact with us, they go down and swim underneath our kayaks. Wow. And they're, what they were doing here was pushing that Arctic cod into the shore. There's my <laughs> wife looking very excited. Yeah. And uh, we're sitting and waiting, our hearts pumping with excitement. And uh, then some gorgeous shots of narwhale. You can see the tusks coming right out of the water here. And uh, a beautiful uh, uh, end of day video. Probably shot at about midnight with the sun low on the horizon. Backlit, their air uh, blowing out of their, their rostrum on the top of their head. Just so spectacular. Trip of a lifetime for you. It is. And, yeah. you know, people have said to me, well, Brian, you know, you've been to the Arctic a lot. What's, what do you think is, is the best? And in my opinion, if you can handle dealing with kayaking and tenting every night, this is the trip to do. And we went with a company called Whitney and & Smith, and they're a local company out of Canmore. Yeah. And they do a lot of these extreme polar trips uh, mm -hmm. and uh, to other remote areas of the world. I've hiked Ellesmere Island with them. I've kayaked off the coast of Argentina with them. Very good little company that, that does the logistics and the organizing, all the food preparation, and they provide the guides. And our guide on this trip had done that same kayak trip about a half dozen times in previous years. So we will link their website to ours. So go to breakfasttelevision.ca. We'll send you over if you want more information. Just great of you to come in here, Brian. Well, thank you. Thanks for sharing, Brian. Another adventure. It feels like we left Calgary for just a little just bit, a doesn't moment. it? Just yeah. a bit.